Hello everyone and welcome to the Fulminati YouTube channel. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about splines. Now if you are not aware, splines are a very important part of Roadrunner, which is a program that helps create trajectories for your autonomous period, and your robot uses these calculated trajectories called splines, and they aren't very intuitive. Programs like Roadrunner GUI can feel confusing because although they visually show you what these splines are going to look like, they don't really tell you how to create these splines. Now this video is meant to help clear up any confusion that you might have over these splines. So to understand splines, first we need to understand the Bezier curve. Bezier curves are created through what's called a LERP function. LERP functions can be seen like uh, this one here, which basically takes a variable such as this one called movement speed, and it assigns a value between 0 and 1. Now, 0 is going to be at the beginning of your point, so in this example, this is our orange ball here, and 1 is going to be at the end of this point, for example, this orange ball here. And 0 0.5, let's say, is going to be right in the middle, 0 0.75 is going to be right here, and 0 0.25 is going to be somewhere over here. So you can now see demonstrated by this blue ball, this is exactly what's happening. It follows this nice line, and it does so over a certain period of time according to this variable up here. Now, if we do the exact same thing, but this time with another ball, uh, following the exact same alert function value up here, now you can see that we have two lines forming. Now what we can do is create yet another alert function, but this time between the two blue balls instead. Now what you'll need to keep in mind is this line will constantly be changing. First it will start from here to here, then it will be from here to here, and then as it gets close to the end it will be from here to here. And you'll also need to keep in mind that that point that we're following on that line is also going to be constantly changing depending on this variable. And it's going to look something like this. which you see is a very nice smooth curve between these two orange balls. And we can even move these balls and you can see how the line will adjust due to that movement. This is what we call the Bezier curve, and this is what creates our splines. Splines are when you take multiple Bezier curves and you combine them into one. Now before we actually get to understanding splines, we need to first understand what a quadratic Bezier curve is. And quadratic Bezier curves are very similar to regular Bezier curves, except instead of three points, they now have four. Now you can see by this demonstration here that now we have two pink balls that are traveling between different points. And what happens is if we add yet another alert function between these two, demonstrated by this green ball here, what you can see is that not only does it follow these three points, but it follows all four points, with only the start and the end being at these two balls right here. And although you can create a spline with only three points, uh, the classic quadratic Bezier curve is how most splines are going to be created. So here is a quick demonstration on the power play field. Basically what we have here is our start and our end point, and yet another start and end point. And you can see that these are our control points right here. So this is a quadratic uh, curve that we have going on between these two points. And then right as these two points end, we have yet another quadratic curve that is between these two points. And what this basically gives us is a spline. Now there is one very important part going on in this power play dem demonstration, and that is that the control points are always going to be mirrored each other. Now the reason that we do this is if we weren't, say that we had our start and end points here, here, and here, but let's say that our control points were something like this, 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 and this. Now what we'd have is a curve that looks something like what you can see is this very harsh transition between our two start and end points. You see that this curve is nice and smooth, and then all of a sudden it just jolts off into this direction. And if you gave this curve into Red Runner, it would throw you an error, a continuity error, which basically means that the velocity between this point and this point was so dramatic that the bot could physically not do it. It would actually be an infinite velocity change. So what we need to do is mirror these control points. So for example, this point is completely fine because there's nothing to mirror on this side, but this point needs to be mirrored. So it needs to be on the exact same opposite angle, and it needs to be the same distance away. And then our next control point can be anywhere that we would care to, for it to be, because this one does not have anywhere to be mirrored to. And now what we would get is a curve that looks something like this, and you can see that it is nice and continuous because due to our points here being mirrored. And you can see that happening in this program that I have made uh, by basically just always forcing these tangents to be opposite of each other. And this is how Runner GUI works, is you're able to give it some coordinates that you can 
uh, put in whatever value you'd like, and then what's called the tangent. The tangent is just the angle that this control point is going to be from your start or end point. And with this value, it will just automatically set the other side of the point so that you don't have to worry about making sure that you do not have a continuity uh, problem in your program. So now we can see on Roadrunner GUI, let's say I just put in some random values, that this is our spline. This is our start point, this is our end point, and we can just guess that our tangents are going to be somewhere over here and somewhere over here. And we can see that it automatically is going to forcefully set up those tangents so that they are mirrored from each other, so that when we have this point here, it is a nice smooth connection uh, between each spline. But we can also have the control to change these tangents. So for example, if we were to set this one to 90, you would see that our curve now goes in the opposite direction, because now our control point is somewhere over here, and our other one somewhere over here. But what's important is you only have control over one control point for each spline, so that way you always have nice smooth continuity between each and every point. And now this makes Roadrunner a lot more understandable because now we understand the coordinate system and we also understand what the tangent is actually doing. We can just change the heading to anything that you'd like and this is just the direction that the robot is facing and this is not actually going to affect our curves in the slightest. So I hope that like makes a lot more sense in how splines and Bezier curves actually work. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to comment below and I'd love to answer anything. Thank you guys so much for watching.